Welcome back to the channel, Features Written in Code. Um, this is the third part of my video on using um, Overmind.js with React. Um, the last part of the video I did log in and log out, and now this part of the video I'm going to show you how to create a user. Once again, I'm not integrated into any backend at this point, we're just kind of going through the motions to show you how everything works. So here we're going to start with the actions this time. A lot of this is going to look really familiar to last time. Um, we're going to use async action and we're going to pass in the specific parameters that are needed to create the user. And what you need to create the user is the email, first name, last name, and password. And we're just going to return a true or false on um, successful login, sorry, on successful create account. So this is the boilerplate setup for the uh, async action for do create account. Usually, as usual, we get the state passed in. We're going to need the state because we have to set the um, uh, error. If an error occurs, then we need to set the user when the user is created. Of course, since we're not integrated to a backend, I'm just going to kind of dummy this up with a fake user, which we will assign to current user, so then the system will believe it's logged in. Um, we got TypeScript, so as usual, we have to set up all of the values for the user info that's getting passed in, as you can see. So as I said, user info has an email, first name, last name, and password. Um, async. So since it's async, we're going to return a promise. Um, as I said, resolved on success and reject on fail. Um, we can set the default error to null. But for my fake user, it's pretty straightforward. We're just going to take all the parameters that are assigned and um, all the parameters, excuse me, that are passed in and assign them to the current user object. And as I'm looking at this, uh, I realize that um, yep, everything is looking good so far. So let's just copy the attributes that need to be associated with the user, assign them to the user, and uh, we should have the user object set up correctly. That's not going to work because the reality is that I need to set those values, either, either destructure my user info or just assign the values directly based on the uh, user info. Let's try, yeah. Mm, yeah, let's do that because that's right. We got to rip the password off of this guy because you don't want to pass the password through as part of the user. So we'll do structure into user object, then clear the password out um, so that the uh, password isn't on the user object. And then we will uh, just destructure the user object that I got passed in to current user. And that little JavaScript magic will solve my problem. So. Now we have the state set with no error. We have a user defined as current user, which is the data that was passed in. All right, next what we want to do is we need to, let's just fake this so that we can throw an error. So basically what we're gonna do is, if I see a specific email address come through, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna fake the system to think that that email exists already and kick an error back. So we'll, and to kick an error back, we're gonna call it reject. And on the reject, we are going to pass I'm seeing a type script there, I think. But on reject, we're going to pass, um, excuse me, first we're going to set the error message to indicate the user already exists. And then on reject, we're going to pass the error message back to the uh, caller, which eh, eh, I guess we can leave it that way for now. We'll see um, in a later episode when we integrate Firebase, we'll see if that still makes sense, but we'll leave it that way for now. So no real changes to the state as we just added a new action. Now let's hop into app.ts and create the create account uh, component. So the create account component, pretty straightforward. We just need to add the additional fields um, to the form, similar to what we did with login. We're just going to create a form, add the fields. Um, when a specific action is called, we will, excuse me, when a specific button is clicked, we'll call the appropriate action. So let's just start by copying um, a component that we already have in place and rename and um, we'll start from there. So here's our create account CSS file. We're not really going to use this time around but just for consistency let's leave it there and then let's now create our create account TSX. Let's uh, rename everything appropriately. So we need to name our components, our create account component and the next thing we need to do is make sure we're exporting as a default to create account. Okay, let's get the login. And I probably should have just copied the login instead of trying to copy all this stuff over. 
but uh, let's start with the login. Let's copy all the stuff that I need and we'll paste it inside a create account just to make it easier for them to do a lot of retyping. And we're going to do something cool this time around. What we're going to do is we're going to remove all these um, set states and we're going to use React Hook or sorry, React Hook form to manage the create account form inside of the create account component. You can check out my dev too. I have a blog post where I introduce how to use um, React Hook with Ionic Framework, but um, we're going to kind of do it in real life here. Okay, so getting down to the functions in our do create account, which is what we're going to call, um, we clearly need to pass it in. As we know, we set it up, so I need to pass an email, first name, last name, password. So we set that up basically. Let's do a little bit more cleaning up. Okay, errors, errors. No, those are just errors from the code. All right, now we have our do create account function. We are going to, yeah, let's add React form hook now. I'm sorry, React hook form. As I said, check out my blog post on Dev2, which kind of goes through this. Let's just install the uh, component here. Get this going. Should install pretty quickly. I think I might have had it installed um, previously when I was testing all this stuff. But all right, it is installed. Now let's start with the required imports for this. Get the server going again. Okay, servers up. Okay, let's add the imports. So we need the we need the use form because that's kind of what kicks the whole thing off. And then, um, like I said, read the blog post, we talk about we're going to use this controller concept. Um, so all the uh, components are controlled. It's, as I said in my blog post, it's just a lot easier to take this approach and try to figure out which ones will work and work without it. And you'll see the pattern uh, in a second here on how we uh, integrate React hook form and how we use this controller component to kind of wrap the Ionic components and, and just kind of pass the events and all the information back to React hook to, to manage it all for you. With React hooks, you can set the default values you want um, your form fields to start off with. As you notice, the form fields match exactly the data that I need to pass off. No more use state. The form will keep all the data in it. Um, kind of, you know, similar to back in the old days when you just had to regulate HTML and manage the form for you. React Hook form will do that for you. On submit, what we want to do is we want to call our do create account function. And when we call our do create account function, we'll be passed in. Um, the object that contains all of the fields that we require from the form to then pass on to our action in Overmind. So hopefully that that made sense. If not, pause, rewind, and hear it again. Okay, so let's wrap the um, the the uh, elements with the form object, and let's start to convert all the form objects appropriately so that they can be passed through. Um, uh, let's definitely make sure we set our input button to submit because we want to just use a basic uh, HTML form submit to get everything passed through appropriately. And then on cancel, we're just going to use the history and push it back to the previous page you were just on. All that's pretty straightforward, similar to what we did the first time around. Okay, let's get to it with the React hook form. Oh, what the hell? Okay, let's get back to it. Okay, so as I said, when you call this create account, from the submit, the data will get passed in to the create, to the do create account function. So we're just going to take that information from data, we're going to destructure it into the separate fields we need, and then we're going to pass those fields on. Now let's start to use the React hook form and kind of clean up um, our UI. Oh, well, let's first give us access to the path to get there. So let's create the um, button on the login page and get access to our history and push that route to create account route so then we can get to the page okay that's what we want now let's clean up the UI bit get the proper language in there enter your information to create your account and um, that's looking better oh, no, let's, okay let's start to move the items to be the appropriate format which is controlled items no okay Set up the labels first. Excuse me. Okay, um, renaming everything. Let's see if we can kind of refresh this and get it going. Last name, first name. Okay. 
There we go. We have all our fields that we need. Oh, title on the button's incorrect. Should be create account now login. And we need to change the title up top to create account also. Now the UI is the way that it's supposed to be. And let's check to see how when a first let's watch how create I mean sorry let's watch how I always get react hook forms and stuff I want to say react form hook um, so what this does is it's pretty cool how it well that's not what I wanted to do let's try this again um, it's pretty cool how it will track the errors I'm getting this promise pro error here because um, I should be calling a wait on that but we'll check that later All right let's integrate the react hook now so as I said you react you wrap the ionic component with this controller object. So you say controller as, and then you're going to pass in the ionic object that you want it to manage. And then you pass a couple of parameters into the controller, i.e. the name. That name is going to be bound to the object that you get back. Um, and then you pass in a set of rules for this pass. We're just going to make all the fields required. So I just pass in required is true. Um, I'm, missing, I, I'm missing the control that I imported above from the um, use hooks and then now we're getting making a little bit of progress now not throwing any errors we got the first one in let's dump so this is how I'll show you the errors that are going to get generated um, since I set this field that I said I think yes I set this field required now when I submit it you can see it's showing us that it did not find that field um, email so that's basically what we want um, and then what we're going to do inside of here is we're just going to console log out the data that gets passed in to us when the submit actually is passed through successfully. So let's see if we can um, see. Now you're seeing the errors once again. Now let's see. Let's start to get the rest of the forms in. So we need to let React hook form know that. The on change is actually called on I on change in Ionic. So then now you can see we're actually getting the data passed through, which is what we wanted. So that's the basic model that we're going to follow for all of the rest of the fields. We're just basically going to wrap them all in this controller, uh, pass to the as property the actual Ionic controller that we want to manage, and uh, make sure we set the name appropriately for what we want the field to be called inside the data object. So we have our email, our first name, our last name, and now the last one we're going to wrap here is our password. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, check out the blog post, look at the source code, and this all didn't make sense to you. Okay. Now, let's go into the debugger so that we can actually see what's going on. You see we uh, have all the fields are marked as required, which is an error, so that's why submit's not working. I'm going to enter some appropriate data in now, and we should see this thing get passed through. So now all the fields are there. I create account, I drop in my debug point, see all the data, all the data is where we want it to be. So we should get it. Yes. So we got a user created, information's there, is logged in is true, everybody should be happy. Let's go back to log out, everybody's gone, and now let's try our error message. Let's change that to the bad email address. Let's run it. And oh, what's my error? Hmm. Let's go back and see what did I miss? What did I miss? What did I miss? Errors thrown. Hmm. So I can create an account. Create an account. Create an account. Uh, errors in. Oh. I did not make the call asynchronous, so it's not waiting for the response. So I need to put the async await on there. So we should probably now let's give it another go. Put that bad joint in there, the error. Boom, boom, boom. Create account. Goes through. Error is caught. Error message appears. User already exists. Everything got thrown properly. Let's create another user. Bang. Logged in. Good. We're done. Um, that about wraps it up for this video. Please like and subscribe. Um, stick around because there will be another episode of this blog post where we are going to actually integrate the uh, Firebase into the back end. Um, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you uh, got a lot out of this. Uh, learned a little bit about React Hooks using Overmind. And um, once again, like, subscribe. Thank you for stopping by the channel. Enjoy.